You're about to learn the healing art of massage. Naturally, you will not be able to master all the techniques after one viewing. Therefore, we encourage you to review the instructions section by section, perfecting one stroke at a time. Each time you return to the video, repeat the strokes you've mastered and then proceed to new ones. With a little practice, you'll soon be able to give an invigorating whole body massage. Stress, what a killer. It's something we all have in our lives. No matter who we are or what we do, stress is unavoidable. But I've learned there's something you can do about it. Massage. Massage can help you relax. It can soothe away tension and pain so you can move more freely. Best of all, it can make you feel like a new person. When you bring massage into your life, you're taking positive steps towards better health. Since the ancient Chinese and Egyptians, massage has been used for healing, for enhancing beauty, and for improving athletic performance. So as new as massage may seem to you, it's really not. Mm. How many times have you rubbed a friend's tight shoulders, or throbbing temples, or aching feet? That's massage, and it's a good beginning. But now with the help of our massage experts, Mirka Naster and James Harland, we're going to show you how to give a great massage for the whole body. Right, Mirka? Sure. We're going to teach you our version of Swedish massage that's easy and fun to learn. With a little practice and patience, you'll be able to give a massage that's both therapeutic and pleasurable. And it's something special that you can share with someone you care about. And it feels great, too. Right. <laughs> that's because with this Western-style massage, you can feel the benefits right away. You know, massage is easy to do. We've made our instructions simple to follow by dividing them into six sections of the body. We're going to begin with the back and end with the head. That way you can take a break and come back to those areas you'd like to practice again. And we're also going to show you some quick stress busters that you can do on yourself when your partner's not around. But before we begin the instructions, there are some basic preparations I found make the massage more enjoyable and effective. It's important to choose a place where you won't be disturbed by children, pets, or telephones. Soft lights and music, and a pleasant scent add a special touch. And make sure the room temperature is just right for your partner. Place a clean sheet on a soft but firm surface. No beds, please. Keep blankets, a variety of pillows, towels, and a container of oil handy. Shower or bathe beforehand to feel fresh and relaxed. Remove jewelry and contact lenses and wear something that allows you to move freely. Oh, that music's perfect. I love it. Uh, fireplace feels good, too. Did you unplug the telephone? Yes. Okay, and just a couple of things. After creating a relaxing environment, let your partner know where your sore or sensitive areas are, especially if you have any injuries or medical problems that would make the massage not only uncomfortable but unadvisable. All right, you've prepared everything around you. Now you need to do one last thing for yourself. What's that? Become aware of your breathing. There's a direct relationship between your breath and your state of mind. Watching your breath centers your energy and makes it easier to give and receive a massage. Okay, how do I do that? All right, close your eyes and take a nice deep breath. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale. 
Has your breath fast and shallow, or is it long and deep? And do you feel it in your chest or your abdomen? I feel it uh, in my abdomen. Okay. This time, as you breathe in, imagine fresh energy coming into your body. And as you breathe out, try to let go of all your tension. If you find that your mind wanders, it's okay. Just bring your attention back to your breath. Whenever you're preparing for a massage, take this time to slow down together. It'll help you become more attuned to each other. How do you feel, Sherry? Definitely ready for a massage. Make contact by lightly placing your hands on your partner's head and just pause for a moment. And gently release. And briskly rub your palms together to bring heat and energy into them. You want your touch to feel warm and not come as a cold shock. Take a little oil and warm it between your palms. Don't pour it directly on your partner's skin. You can buy massage oil or prepare your own by using a vegetable oil like safflower or almond or mixing several kinds together and adding a pleasant scent. The back is a wonderful place to begin because it's the largest area of the body. Most of us have had a back rub before. We feel safe here and sometimes overburdened. Like you're carrying the whole world on your shoulders? Right. So take time to practice here. It'll make it easier when we go on to the next sections. And don't pressure yourself. Just stop and try again. We're going to begin with a light effleurage. It's a very basic stroke that we use to apply oil and to prepare the muscles for deeper work by warming them up first. Just use your whole hands as you glide down the back and around the shoulders. Okay, now we're going to do a simple thumb stroke by placing our thumbs on the shoulders at the base of the neck. And we're going to use our thumb pads, not the tips because they'll feel sharp, to press evenly along the shoulder. You'll feel a notch as you move out toward the end of the shoulder. And let's do that again. How's that pressure, Sherry? Feels pretty good. Good. You want to start off with light to medium pressure because we'll gradually be going deeper. Now with our thumb pads, we're going to move into friction stroke, making small thumb circles alongside the spine. Don't ever apply pressure directly on the spine itself. We use a friction stroke to do more detail work, especially around bony areas. We're going to go all the way down to the lower back and now spread our thumbs out. And now using our hands in a flat way, we're going to make large circles coming around in order to come back up. And let's do that again, only this time we're going to make larger friction circles so that we include more tissue around the spine. Just spreading our thumbs out. Now this area has a lot of spinal nerves that connect to the rest of the body. So when you give a back massage, you can give a feeling of total relaxation all over. You know, you're not confined to using only your hands in massage. So let's take our forearm, placing it alongside the spine, and moving smoothly across to the side and up as we place the other forearm, and alternating down, across, and up. Now that we've warmed up the shoulders with uh, some simple thumb strokes, we're going to do a little bit deeper work. We're going to do a shoulder knee by pressing one thumb across 
and then bringing the other thumb in. Notice that my hands don't leave the back, they just slide out of the way. Pressing back and pressing across that notch that we felt earlier. And then repeat this on the other side. Some people think massage is just rubbing. It's really not. There's a lot of variety to what you can do. So for the next stroke, let's do something different. Place your hands on your partner's shoulder blades. Have your partner inhale. And on the exhalation, vibrate. It simulates the normal movement of the shoulder blades and helps loosen them. And inhale again. And vibrate. Okay, now we're going to shift to the side. This is a good time to check and see how your own body feels. You want to be comfortable so that the massage you give has a relaxing effect. Shake out your arms and your hands. And roll your shoulders. Now we're going to do a side knead. So reach across and taking hold of the tissue with one hand and alternating with the other. It's we're a kind of squeezing motion. Notice that I'm making a circle with my right hand counterclockwise and my left hand clockwise. One circle passes over the other. Notice too that as my hands move back and forth, so does my body. You really can make your massage into a kind of dance. Now we're going to hook over the side and use our forearms to pull across. And before you finish one, begin the other one. Hooking and pulling, maintaining continuous contact. Repeat these last two strokes on the other side and then place your palms on the lower back, moving in a clockwise direction. Maintain contact the whole time with one palm while the other hand crosses over at the wrist. This has a nice soothing effect on the lower back, brings blood to it, warms it. Okay, now we're going to use our forearms again. To stretch and lengthen the back, we lean over, place our forearms in the middle of the back, and pulling away. And then on the near side, notice that I'm not applying any pressure to the spine. And one final stroke down the center, very lightly touching the spine, but with no pressure at all. And we're going to break contact the way we began, very gradually, like a whisper just trailing off. our feet and legs, we make contact with the earth. When we're grounded, we're able to be more present instead of only up in the air and in our heads. Our partner for the next section is Adriano Serafini. So as we did on the back, let's take a little oil and apply it with a light effleurage and warm up the muscles for deeper work. Okay, we're going to do a simple V effleurage by placing our hands in a V formation with the index finger and the thumb and placing one hand on top of the other. Then placing them on the ankle, 
We're going to push up in the direction of the heart without pressure behind the knee. And this helps assist the veins to bring blood back to the heart. And trace back down. And let's push up again. And as I inhale, I trace back down. We're going to use the same V formation to do a deeper effleurage. Only this time we're going to squeeze as we go up, but not pinch, just squeeze the muscles. Oh, that's sore. Did you run today? Yeah, I did. Okay, the stroke we do after this is going to help flush out the lactic acid that builds up when you do exercise and create that soreness. The stroke will also bring fresh oxygen to the muscles. And notice that my pressure is always up, one hand following behind the other, even as I'm coming back down. Now we're going to shift to the side of the body and take a moment to check yourself. Remember, it's really important to stay relaxed. If you need to, shake out. We're going to do a kneading stroke the way we did on the side of the back. Only here there's no bone, so we can really take hold of more tissue. Alternating our hands as we squeeze up. Remember those circles, clockwise and counterclockwise. To avoid pulling hair, just use a little more oil. Let's go back to the foot. We're going to do a V effleurage to push the accumulated acid into the bloodstream. trace back down. This time we're going to go up the back of the leg with a friction stroke using our fists. Placing them at the ankles, make circles as you move up in the direction of the heart. Lighten up behind the knee. This helps to spread the muscle fibers to allow nutrients to flow through. When your muscles are able to receive more oxygen, they can perform better. Remember the direction is toward the heart even as we're coming down the leg. Okay, let's move to the side of the leg now. And we're gonna lift the leg by taking hold of the foot and bringing our thumb around the big toe and shaking the calf. Mm, I like that. Good, that's a really useful move for people who have a lot of soreness in their calves from running or other exercise. This helps avoid the pressure. Okay, now we're going to bring the heel to the buttock to stretch the front of the thigh. And on each exhalation, bring it a little bit closer. And only as far as is comfortable for your partner. Then let's shake back down. Okay, from the buttock, we're going to bring the leg into a 90 degree position, take hold of the foot, and rotate the ankle in one direction and then in the other. Then holding at the heel and the toes, we're gonna twist in the opposite direction and then shake the calf back down to place it on the floor. And we're gonna move back to the foot. We're gonna start off by using our finger pads and making small friction circles around the heel and down the sides coming back up again and around the ankle bones. Now to give more pressure, use the heel of your hand and apply it to the heel of your partner's foot, pressing in, making circles as you go down the sole, and coming back up. And now we're going to use our thumbs press across and stretch the foot. And one more time. Let's just smooth out the foot to finish off. You'll be doing the front of the foot when you do the front of the leg. For the last stroke on the back of the legs, we're gonna do something completely different. So let's move to the side. 
We're going to do a percussion, which is a stimulating stroke. And let's practice on ourselves first. Loosely shake your wrist. We're going to be using the side of the hand. And practice on your thigh to do a hacking movement. Then bring your hand into a fist and pound. OK, let's start at the ankle. Percussing up the back of the leg, but not behind the knee. Coming into a fist for the buttock. And then up the back. Remember, not on the spine, just alongside it. And don't pound in the area of the kidneys. And ending with percussion. Do the same thing on the other side. Now we're going to do a connecting stroke to integrate the lower and upper halves of the body. Sitting at the hips, place your hands on the buttock. And as one hand moves up the back, the other one moves down the leg. And simultaneously, we're going to reach the hand and foot. Just hold briefly and then let go. Do the same thing on the other side. To do the final stroke on the back of the body, let's move up to the head again. Sit down comfortably. Place one hand lightly on the head. And then using our index finger and middle finger, let's place them at the base of the spine and slowly walk our fingers up alongside the spine. Hi, I'm James Hartland, and I'm going to be showing you how to do the front of the legs now. Here's our partner, Francesca Biller, and we're ready to go. Before we proceed, let's check underneath the lower back to see if it curves away from the floor. If it does, there's some tension there that could be irritating during the massage. Place a pillow underneath the leg that is not being worked on. This will ease the lower back onto the floor in a relaxed position. All right. Now take some oil and warm it in your hands. And we're going to apply it with an effleurage. We'll start just above the ankle with the hands facing in opposite directions. And we'll slide up light over the knee and then lean into the thigh with pressure let your hands break apart at the top of the thigh and just lightly trace down the sides now reverse and come up with pressure again now hands together lightly trace down the top now let's repeat this whole sequence three times All right, when you finish that just kneel right back down and we'll knead starting at the ankle using the pads of our fingers and thumbs. So we'll work in a small circle, the ankle and the sides of the calf, the sides of the knee and now the thigh. Pressure towards the heart. And now let's switch hands into the alternating squeezing motion that Mirka showed us. All right, we'll finish this sequence with another set of effleurage. And remember not to apply any pressure directly onto the knee. All right. Now let's shift our position so we're kneeling at our partner's side. All right, we'll cross stroke the thigh now by placing our hands right next to each other, just above the knee. Put one hand on the far side of the leg and the other on your near side. And we'll cross stroke the thigh this way three times. Let your whole body move, shift your weight. Now, we've just separated muscle fibers and loosened some toxins, so we'll 
flush those toxins back into the bloodstream with another effleurage. All right, kneel at your partner's foot and we're ready to continue. Let's just soothe the foot. We don't need any more oil. Just kind of a greeting. And now using our thumbs, the pads of our thumbs, we'll start just at the base of the toes and make some nice friction circles across the top of the foot. And then come back and using the pads of our fingers, let's get the sides of the foot and we'll continue right to the ankle. These friction circles feel really good. And just smooth back. Now we're ready to work on the toes. We'll begin by placing the tip of the little toe just between our thumb and first two fingers. And we'll knead right down from the tip to the base where we'll take the toe and just twist it as we pull away. That tickles. Oh, I can increase the pressure. Does that help? Yeah, that's a little better. I could also put a towel there if you need it. No, that's okay. All right, and once you're done with the toes, we'll reach down to the ankle where we'll just place it between our thumb and index finger and we'll squeeze. This releases a lot of tension. And do that like three times. Really give it a good firm squeeze. All right. Continue now by lifting our partner's knee and we'll sit so that our thigh is just snug across the toes so that the foot doesn't slip. Hold the knee with your outside hand and using the inside of your forearm, we're gonna circle the calf by starting just above the ankle and pulling our forearm toward us, make circles. These muscles can be very tender. All right, slide down and circle back up. And this time, when you get to the top of the calf, bring your both hands onto the knee, which will roll a little. And we're gonna continue that rolling action right onto the thigh with pressure towards the heart. Slide back and another roll and slide back. And finally, a real good roll. All right. Now, leave your outside hand on top of the knee as you shift your position to the side. And we'll lift the knee and press it toward the chest on our partner's exhalation. And say when, Francesca. When. Okay, as you lower the leg now, bring your other hand under the heel and using the hand that's on the knee as a guide, let the leg fall to the outside. And we're going to rotate the leg now as if the knee were on the edge of a large bowl. And two circles in each direction should do it. Put your hand that was on top of the leg under the leg so it doesn't suddenly drop. Okay, shift back so you're sitting at the foot and take the ankle with your inside hand and rest your outside hand just on top of the foot. Give a slight pull to the leg and shake it straight up and down so the back of the knee is lightly tapping the floor. Okay, now we'll finish off working on this leg with one final effleurage. And when you've finished both legs, we're going to integrate the body and the legs now. First, 
place the heels in your palms and come up with the soles of your partner's feet on your forearms and just rock your partner while you have them sigh a couple of times. <sighs> slowly let the heels come onto the floor and now we'll finally integrate both legs by gently tracing down from the top of the thigh The torso and the abdomen are often where your partner feels most vulnerable. So as you make contact, send reassurance silently through your hands that they're safe. Now move your partner's arms away from their body just a little bit. Put some oil in your hands. Warm it. And we'll begin the effleurage this time at the stomach. Move with pressure up. Let them come apart at the collarbones and trace lightly down the sides and reverse with pressure up the sides and lightly trace down the top. Repeat this three times with a little more increasing pressure each time except on the area just below the navel. We'll begin kneading just above your partner's left hip and using our finger pads for pressure and the palms for lighter pressure, we'll cover the entire torso in this fashion. All right, we'll begin kneading the sternum now in small circles using just the finger pads. This is a good place to notice how tension can actually block the feeling of being tense. And your partner might be surprised to see how much tension they've been holding there. My breathing is easier. Good. Okay, come back now to the base of the sternum, but just an inch or so out from the center where we'll repeat the move. Go deeper now and feel for the spaces in between the ribs. And from here, let's go over to the left side again where we'll do a pectoral knead. Work in detail on the base of the pectoral, up the middle. and give it a good massage. Now do this also on the other side. And when you're done with both sides, bring your hands together so at the very center where we'll spread them and effleurage the pectorals. All right, let's move over to our partner's left side arm and we're going to be working on the stomach now you don't want to work on your partner's stomach if they've eaten within the last two hours the first thing we'll do is raise our partner's knees so the feet are flat on the floor and just like we learned on the thigh we'll begin working on the stomach with a cross stroke pulling with your far hand as you push with the near and using your whole body cross stroke the torso three times. Now let's go right into some stomach friction circles. We're not pressing in very hard, just rubbing the surface. And again, no pressure on the area below the navel. We'll continue with some traces. We'll start just above our partner's right hip, our left hand over our right. Press in an inch or so, and just pull up under the ribs, 
across the diaphragm and down. Lightly move across the stomach, back to the same place. And this time we'll do like a circle motion. Be mindful of your partner's breath. Holding the breath creates tension. So now we'll go right to the diaphragm where we'll circle in about an inch deep and have your partner take a nice big sigh. Come back and finish off now with another cross stroke. Now replace your partner's arm and move back up to their head. And we'll end with a final effort. We use our arms and hands to make contact with the world. Massage relieves the effects of stress, leaving them open to give and receive again. So let's continue. Let's put a little oil in our hands. And we'll oil the arm starting right at the top of the shoulder and stroking down. Right off the fingers. And repeat again to make sure the arm is entirely oiled. And when you reach the bottom of the hand this time, let's just take the arm and give it a little pull and shake. And we're ready to effleurage. Take the hand in your outside hand and we'll stroke up the top and the side. Switch hands and we'll do the outside and finally the back of the arm. All right, we're ready to move on to the hand now. And just like we learned on the toes, we're going to knead down the fingers with our thumb and first two fingers. And when we get to the base, we'll just twist off, first in one direction and then the other. Continue on all the fingers this way. Okay, when you've done all the fingers, let's turn the hand over and using our thumbs in circles, right at the base of the fingers and move down onto the hand. Turn the hand over. And we'll finish with the hand by spreading it. Bring your thumbs together so, and squeeze together and separate. We'll continue now with a deep knead of the forearm. Using the same motion that we did on the sides of the calf with our finger pads and thumb pads. Pressure towards the heart. Again, when you get to the elbow, just hold your partner's arm with your elbow and your side, and we'll work up the sides of the upper arm, and down the back, which is the tricep, and using a cross thumb circle, we'll go right up the bicep. Now this next move takes a little practice, but it's well worth it. We're going to roll the hand, and we'll just place it in between our hands thus, and roll it. 
just like the thigh. When you get to the wrist, let the hand fall over. Work vigorously down the forearm. And now comes violin playing time. We're going to take the hand and place it just between my head and my shoulder, and we'll hold it there with my shoulder. Now the arm is completely free, and I can roll. Repeat. And let the arm fall. Now, using the heel of your hand, we're going to work an imaginary line that comes right across the deltoid with just a vibration. And we'll finish off with a nice effleurage. All right, we'll finish the arms and the hands with an overhead arm pull. Take your partner's hands at the wrists, bring them over your head. And use your body weight to pull the arms, put a vibration in them while you have your partner take a breath. And we'll finish by simply placing our hands across the stomach and lightly tracing off the arms. Our face is where we feel most exposed to the world and what we notice first in others. Too often we get stuck in our head and become disconnected from the rest of our body. Our neck winds up feeling more like a bottleneck. Relaxing the head can help us let go of too much thinking and allow us to experience more of our sensual side. Placing your hands on your partner's upper chest, fingers pointing down, just push away one shoulder and then the other, alternating like cat's paws. Then bringing your hands behind the neck, you can slightly lace your fingers, holding firmly but without pressing hard on the ears and be careful not to press on the throat. Leaning your body weight back, we're gonna stretch the head out, not raising it up, just stretching back. And one more time. Oh, I can feel that all the way down my spine. Good. Let's take a little oil. Smooth it around the shoulders and behind the neck. The next stroke is like pulling rope. We're gonna stroke back, alternating one hand with the other. And notice that it naturally moves the head from side to side as I move from side to side, too. And continuing on the back of the neck, but this time we're going to be using our finger pads to make little circles, friction circles, alongside the spine, moving up to the base of the skull, and then pressing along this ridge deeply by loosening the tight muscle attachments along this ridge you can often help release a headache all right release and now let's bring our partner's head gently to the side lightly placing one hand on the head we're going to smooth down the side of the neck coming around, cupping the shoulder, and applying pressure as we come back up all the way to the base of the skull. Gliding down and coming around. Now keeping your hand on the head, place your hand on the shoulder and stretch them away from each other to give a feeling of length. And let's do that stretch again. All right, repeat on the other side, and then bring your partner's head to the center. Holding securely underneath, 
You can put your thumbs around the temple and then have your partner breathe in. And on an exhalation, lift. Okay, Francesca, let me have your head. I promise oh, I'm I not going to really drop it. it. I'm Okay, and inhale. And exhale. One more time. Okay, bring the head only as far as it's comfortable for your partner. Inhale. And on an exhalation, let's bring it all the way back down. Okay, if your hands feel oily, you might want to dry them now before we massage the scalp. Pressing your fingers on the scalp and pressing all over. Remember, you can use a lot of pressure on the scalp. Most of us are pretty hard-headed. We don't need any oil to massage the face either. Place your thumbs between the eyebrows and begin to smooth up the forehead. And then we're going to make bands across by separating our thumbs. And again, smoothing out any worry lines or frowning. And one last band, and let's stop at the temples. Press in deeply in a rotating motion. And we're going to go across the eyebrows. Make sure your partner's not wearing any contact lenses. We're going to take our index fingers. We're going to press tiny circles along the upper ridge of the eye socket. And then using our thumbs, we're going to do the lower ridge. And again, using the thumbs, spreading across the eyelids. Bring your thumbs back to the space between the eyebrows. One's going to go down the nose and one up the forehead. And we're going to slide down alongside the nose, stopping at the base of the nostrils. And press in here. This helps relieve congestion, which sometimes happens after you're lying face down. Bringing your fingers under the cheekbones and play with the cheeks, but do it in an upward motion. This helps counter the effects of gravity and age. And outlining the mouth. And let's roll the jaw between our thumb and our fingers to help loosen this area. And then pressing in right at the joint. This is where I usually carry a lot of my tension. Okay, so do a good massage here in the joints where these muscles meet. And then using our index finger or the middle finger, we're going to massage in small circles behind the ear then taking hold of the ear with the thumb, just kind of explore little valleys and crevices in here. And then rolling off the earlobe. To complete the massage, go down to your partner's feet and hold them. And just pause here for a moment. Give your partner a message of love and healing energy. And when you're ready, release your hands so gradually that your partner won't even notice that the massage has ended. Massage is great, isn't it? You're probably wondering how you ever got along without it. So let's review now some of what Mirka and James have just demonstrated. Remember, each stroke serves an important purpose in making the massage effective. You'll find that as you return and repeat the strokes, that you'll develop both in skill and creativity. And don't worry, you are not going to ruin the whole massage just because you botch up one stroke. With practice, you'll be able to develop your own style to suit your needs. Effleurage can feel like water gliding over the body. It's a good way to begin and complete any large area like the torso and the arms. Use it to smooth on oil and get acquainted with the feel of your partner's body. By starting light and gradually increasing the pressure, you can warm up the muscles for deeper work. Kneading often follows effleurage. It relaxes tight muscles from tension or exercise. 
Like kneading dough, alternately grasp and squeeze the flesh with one hand as the other releases. Develop your own rhythm and don't lift your hands from your partner's body as you knead. Kneading is useful for all fleshy areas of the body, especially the legs and the shoulders. Relaxed hands are the key to giving a great massage. Tense hands feel hard and can't convey a message of relaxation. So get in the habit of shaking them. This way your strokes will be a lot smoother. The more you massage, the stronger your hands will become. Friction strokes, such as palm circles, finger pad circles, and cross strokes, move across the grain of the muscle, removing the last remnants of surface tension from the body. Apply direct pressure with your finger pads or thumbs in a circular motion. Begin lightly and then work deeper. These friction strokes help break up knots and soften tight muscles. You can increase the benefits of friction strokes if you follow them with effleurage. Percussion belongs in a category all its own. Percussive movements are stimulating rather than relaxing. Hacking and pounding increases the blood flow and energy to the muscles in the skin. Make sure that your hands, fingers, and wrists are loose before you begin. Use the outer edge of your hands for hacking and a soft fist for pounding. Experiment with different speeds and pressures. Remember, all you need are your hands, a little practice, and a little TLC to give a great whole body massage. Now that you have massage at your fingertips, just think of all the wonderful times you and your partner can have sharing a whole body massage. But just suppose your partner's not around and you have a splitting headache or tension in your neck and shoulders. Or you're just feeling bleh and you want a quick boost. What should you do? Well, I do a series of stretches and self-massages known as dress breakers. They relieve tension and they work as a quick pick-me-up. The best thing about them is that you can do them anytime and just about anywhere. Take a deep breath. Exhale. Take another deep breath, and this time raise your shoulders to your ears. Exhale gently, lowering your shoulders down. Now inhale again and raise and tighten your shoulders all the way and hold for a count of 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Relax. Take a deep breath. Exhale. And again, powerfully inhale and raise your shoulders up all the way. Hold for a count of 10. Squeeze and tighten every muscle in your body. Let go and relax. Breathe in and out. Now take hold of your right elbow with your left hand and pull your arm to the left and hold for a count of 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now reverse sides and take hold of your left elbow with your right hand and pull to the right and hold. Breathe easily and feel those muscles relax. Release. 
Raise your arms above your head. Breathing easily, take hold of your right elbow with your left hand and pull your arm to your left side and hold for a count of 10. Release. Now repeat on the opposite side. You should avoid these stretches if you experience any pain or discomfort. This stretch is excellent for releasing tension from the upper back, neck, and shoulders. Now relax. Take a deep breath and extend your arms out to your sides, palms facing out. Push out and apply pressure through your palms. Exhale. Relax the pressure. Now inhale and push harder. If your arms begin to shake, that's okay. Exhale slowly, dropping your arms to your sides. Inhale and raise your arms gracefully above your head. Stretch your arms and fingers as far as you can. Shake your hands and fingers vigorously. Exhale and slowly lower your arms. Breathe. Roll your shoulders forward five times. One, two, three, four, Five. Reverse. For the final stretch, inhale deeply and raise your arms slowly above your head. Stretch your arms way up and try to touch the ceiling. Exhale. Inhale and interlock your fingers, bringing your elbows tight up against your ears. Exhale. Inhale deeply again. Stretch up, fingers pointing towards the ceiling, and hold your breath for a count of 10. Keep your body relaxed, especially your face muscles. Exhale all of your breath and hold for a count of five. Relax and take a few seconds to notice how good you feel. Straighten your neck tall and gently ease your chin forward so it's just resting off your chest. Relax your face and jaw muscles and hold for 15 seconds. Feel the stretch along the back of the neck, especially where your skull meets the back. Raise your shoulders and gently let your head move backward, then forward, back, and then side to side. Don't pull or push. Let gravity do all the work for you. The object is to have the muscles release gradually on their own. Breathe easily and bring your right hand to your left shoulder, letting your right arm rest on your chest. Reach for the trapezius muscle between the top of your shoulder and your shoulder blade. Using your whole hand, knead the muscle with a squeezing motion. Work gently at first and then go deeper. Squeeze and relax the muscle. Work all the way out to the shoulder, then the bicep, then the forearm, 
Then go back up the arm, across the shoulders and to the other side. This massage can be effective in preventing the onset of a tension headache. Using both hands, squeeze and knead both sides of your neck. Begin gently and then slowly increase the pressure coordinating your breath and inhale with each squeeze. These spots may be very sensitive, so if you find massaging them is too painful, try just pressing in with your finger pads and slowly deepen the pressure. You'll find this technique will develop your ability to give a whole body massage. Bring your hands to your forehead and with the finger pads of your middle fingers, massage in a circular motion. Smooth the center of your forehead, gradually massaging across until you reach your temples. Firmly press in and continue to make small circles. Bring your fingers down to the joints at both sides of your jawline and continue the pressing in an upward motion to loosen the jaw muscles. Relax your mouth and jaw. Massage to your chin. Now bring your fingers back to the center of your forehead and stroke with your finger pads across an imaginary band on your forehead. And then down over your eyebrow. And then very lightly over your eyes. Continue stroking and spreading across your cheeks, nose, lips, mouth and chin. To complete our series of stress breakers, begin tapping your head with your finger pads, letting your fingers fall like raindrops, first increasing the pressure and then decreasing. Along the back, down the neck. Now make fists and gently pound all over your head. down the back of your neck, then along your shoulders, down your arm, this gentle pounding will increase your circulation and energy level, down the other side, Continue on to the chest, stomach, abdomen, thighs, calves, when working on the legs and calves, you can increase the pressure. This percussion can be used effectively when you wake up in the morning, or after exercising, or whenever you need a quick energy boost.
Massage for Health can help you discover a whole new way of living. A life with less stress and less pain. And a body that breathes, stands, and moves more freely. Soothing Touch Massage Oils, the professional's choice for massage and aromatherapy. Enriched with herbs and vitamins, these all-natural essential oils are available in health food stores everywhere. Soothing Touch Massage Oils from Sunshine, pure and simply the best.